I just I just wanted to say I think it's good. We were very concerned with the way we were being treated last session, um, and we had some a few kinks in some of the legislative matters that went through. Um, those are being fixed or in the process of being fixed. But things could obviously go poorly at the last minute, but for right now, it seems like everything's on the right track. Eric continues to have his fingers on the pulse of what's going on, and when necessary, myself and the other members of the board and our other um, uh, team members that are not on the board continue to influence those decisions where we need to to make sure that just that we're treated fairly like the other ISDs. We just want a fair playing field. We don't want to be mistreated. And, um, you know, the focus is on educating kids. So, Eric, great job. Great job to you. And I don't know in the pictures if you um, uh, could see on the previous slide, but there were these. Uh, Carrie, will you go back one slide for me? This bottom picture, you can see these boards and uh, Deborah and Eric worked to have display boards put up throughout the Capitol of pictures of our scholars and facts about uplift. You're able to do that and rotate them through for a couple of days or a week. And so they were up when James and team were there, which I thought was really neat too. And just another great way of raising awareness about uplift. And, uh, and a big shout out to Chairman Morgan Meyer who helped us do that. He continues to be a big advocate for public schools and charter schools and equal treatment of public charters along with many other members in the legislature. Hey, Yasmin. Yes, sir, Andre. How you doing? Thanks, James and Eric. Did we, I, I was looking at the list. Did we get a chance to see the chair, House Chair of Education Dunning? Done. So yes, I'd be more than happy to answer that. Yes, we put the request in through his staff. So hopefully we can get a time on the chairman's schedule very okay. shortly. Yes, now okay, that good. specifically too that SB1 has finally passed. So, gotcha, okay. Yes, sir. Good deal. And then Andre, I did a call with Chairman Dutton's office and my colleague, um, the CEO of Yes Prep, since he's from the Houston area and the superintendent of San Antonio ISD, Pedro Martinez. The uh -huh. three of us did a call with his, a Zoom call with his staff maybe three or four weeks ago about ESSER okay. funds and helping educate them about that. Uh, so um, we okay. have had a touch point. It just wasn't part of this two day blitz. Gotcha. OK. He has well, strong relationships here in Fort Worth, so just want to make note of that with uh, former House Rep uh, Glenn Lewis. OK, that's really good to know, Andre. Thank you. Well, uh, again, thank you both Eric and James for your presentation. Again, I think it uh, another uh, successful uh, trip down to Austin to have uh, Uplift being presented. And again, thank for uh, all the effort that y'all did in that part. We've had a great year on the uh, on the advocacy side. So appreciate it. Um, now we'll hear from Yasmin on the first administrative item related to the name change for Uplift Peak. Great, thank you. Um, so uh, just a reminder of a little bit of the why behind this. Uh, we shared with the board earlier this fall, late summer, that we had discovered the history behind um, the whole Peak Historic District, honestly, that Uplift Peak sits in, uh, and that it had been named after Junius Peak, and that his family um, uh, had ties to being founding members of the Dallas chapter of the KKK. And so we felt it was important uh, to uh, change the name of Uplift Peak because that was not why we 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 had not picked that name to honor the the Peak family uh, from East Dallas, and so we went through a very inclusive process over the past several months. It honestly got hung up longer than it should have in the legal checking of the names, um, uh, but I'm really uh, proud of the collective team's work on it. So we started out with literally a blank piece of paper and asked uh, kids, parents, staff to submit names for Uplift Peak. We then took those, we talked about them with the Peak leadership team, the executive team, um, uh, and uh, whittled down the list. I think we had about six names that we sent uh, to have a law firm vet for us to see which one we would get clearance. We then took three that we got legal clearance on and we sent it back to all three of those stakeholder groups 
for another vote um, and uh, then came up with Uplift Atlas being the winner. So Carrie, if you'll go to the next slide for me, please. Uh, we had 1,700 responses. Over half of them came from kids. Obviously, they're a captive audience. But we had, you know, 27% of the responses, a couple hundred, came from parents, which was great. Um, uh, uh, and then, of course, staff's the smallest number, but they're the smallest of all of those three uh, constitu constituent groups that we had. And if you go to the next slide for me, Carrie, um, so 47% of um, all of the stakeholders across the 1700 responses picked Uplift Atlas um, uh, and then Uplift Soul was the second choice. It was interesting. Um, staff slightly preferred Uplift Atlas. Parents slightly preferred Uplift Soul, but the kids overwhelmingly preferred Uplift Atlas. So I think it's pretty neat that the kids uh, shaped the vote when it was uh, pretty close um, between the other two groups. Uh, part of the attraction for Atlas is in Greek mythology. For those of you who remember, uh, Atlas um, uh, was a titan who was condemned to hold up the heavens for eternity. Uh, and so it has that kind of, well, not the aspiration of being condemned, but the aspiration of kind of reaching upwards uh, that so many of our other uplift school names have. And then also, of course, the technical definition of Atlas is a book of maps and uh, signals the global nature of our international baccalaureate uh, instructional program. And so, uh, we are asking for the board to officially approve Uplift Atlas as the new name for Uplift Peak. And then uh, post that, we would go into motion of doing all the things we have to do, you know, physically replacing signs on the building, TEA, uniforms, all of those things um, uh, over the summer to be able to uh, start having the school operate under Uplift Atlas for next school year. So with that, um, Richard, I would love if you could ask for a motion to welcome Uplift Atlas into the Uplift family. So, is there a motion to approve the resolution to change the names of all the Uplift Peak Preparatory Schools to Uplift Atlas Preparatory Primary School, Uplift Atlas Preparatory Middle School, and Uplift Atlas Preparatory High School, respectively? Yes, I'd be happy to uh, make that motion. Colin here. Thank you, Colin. Second. Thank you. Are there any votes against the motion? Hearing none, I'll ask Alex to note all members of the executive committee present voted in favor of the motion and the motion passes. Thank you. And now I'll turn it over to Alex for our second administrative action item. Perfect. Thank you, Richard. Uh, Carrie, if you don't mind, if you could go back just a couple of slides to the summary of administrative action items for me, please. There you go, right there. Perfect. So we're going to take a, a quick look um, at the second item. Uh, it, it is the waiver for the local designation system annual survey and response plan requirement due to COVID-19. Uh, that is a lot of words. What that really means um, for our purposes here is uh, a waiver from an annual survey that, that has to do with the teacher incentive allotment. Um, for some historical context, um, and I know we've talked about it uh, here on the call a couple of times, uh, the teacher incentive allotment, TIA, uh, it was created uh, as part of House Bill 3 from the last legislative session, uh, and the purpose was meant to recognize and reward really outstanding great teachers um, across the state. Uh, we were part of the first group of applicants um, who submitted um, um, our kind of plan uh, to the state, which was approved uh, in the summer of 2020. Um, and uh, we're kind of now working on uh, kind of moving forward. Uh, the purpose for the waiver is this. So part of sort of the annual um, kind of planning from TEA um, has to do with this low, so this they, what they call a local designation annual survey. Um, what the feedback that TEA was getting from districts kind of across the state was, with, at least with respect to, to with the to the teacher incentive allotment, doing the survey now really did not make a lot of sense for two reasons. Number one, it was 
it's, it's a very lengthy and cumbersome survey, and obviously districts have um, a number of more, uh, arguably more pressing issues going on they need to address, but even probably more significant than that is, given the last year that we have had, any data that they would be getting would would obviously be skewed. Um, we've had you know teachers working in person, working remote. Obviously, kind of given the year we've had, it, it really wouldn't provide TEA with with the data that that would be effective for them moving forward. So, what TEA did was they created this waiver opportunity for districts across the state. Across the state, I imagine a number of them are going to be approving and submitting the waiver. Uh, and we are recommending to the board that we do the same. So um, I think pretty kind of straightforward here, but I am more than happy to answer any questions you all may have on the waiver. Alex, this is Richard. Yeah. Uh, it, by waiving the survey, are we still going to receive allocations for this teacher incentive allotment? It's just one of the requirements is being waived. That's exactly it. Yeah. So, so basically, at the end of the day, all that all that is happening here is we just like all the other districts that are doing this um, are just not going to submit the survey. Um, the the TEA, um, the teacher incentive allotment is is by all means staying as is. Um, we'll just do the waiver next year. Will be the next time that we'll that we'll take a look at the waiver. It, it's simply that we're just not going to be doing the, the survey and submitting the survey this year. Is there any uh, any other questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the waiver from the local designation system annual survey and response plan requirement due to COVID-19. This is John. I'll move it. Thank you. Is there a second? This is second. Second. Okay. We got a second. Hearing. Are there any votes against the motion? Hearing none, I'll ask Alex to note all members of the executive committee present voted in favor of the motion, and the motion passes. Thank you. Um. At this time, the board will retire to a closed session pursuant to 551.074 of the Texas Government Code to deliberate the appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment, duties, discipline, or, dis or dismissal of a public officer or employee. The time is now 4.58 p.m. And I'll ask any person on the call other than the executive committee, Yasmin, Ann, and Alex to please drop off. To open session, the time is now 5.18 p.m., and I'll note that the same quorum of the board is present. No decisions or actions were made during the closed session. Richard, if you wouldn't mind just giving a minute, um, uh, members of my executive team are rejoining um, uh, the meeting, and um, Remy is also joining. So if, if we could just give one minute, I'll be able to watch them join, and then we can proceed. Okay, thank you, Richard. Uh, my team is here and Dr. Washington is here as well. I wanna again, um, uh, now that we're back in open session, just uh, publicly thank uh, the members of the board who supported us during the promotion process and also for all the various board members for their input along the way. And it is just a great 
uh, professional and personal privilege to ask Richard for you to take a motion uh, to um, approve my recommendation uh, to promote Dr. Remy Washington into the newly created president position at Uplift. Thank you, Thank you. And before I uh, call for the motion, I'll ask if any board members uh, who served on the interview committee would like to just share uh, some of their thoughts um, before we have the vote. Yes, and would you like a, Richard, you all would like a brief word? Yeah. Yes, please. Now that we're back in open session. Right. So, uh, Colm here. Um, so I will say what I've said to the to the group that was involved in the interviewing. Uh, first, that it's um, it's very clear to me that uh, uh, we've come to a place in our organization in terms of the maturation and growth of our organization where it makes eminent sense to create this strong number two position. Mm -hmm. It's good for the organization in every way. Number two, I think we ran a uh, the, the the whole. The whole collective organization, everyone who was involved in it, ran a, a really thoughtful, careful uh, process of thinking through the role, the responsibilities, and and of course thinking about uh, uh, how to fill it. Um, number three, it's abundantly clear, <clears throat> I think, to me and certainly to everyone who is involved in the process from the board point of view, uh, that Dr. Washington is um, uh, more than qualified, is a spectacularly good fit uh, for this new uh, position. Uh, and number four, we had the um, the uh, the honor and privilege, really, of participating in an interview process in which we got to hear Dr. Washington uh, say a few words about uh, a very, very uh, remarkably thoughtful and well prepared words about where she is in her career, her educational philosophy, uh, her her uh, passion for uplift, uh, and and how well prepared she is for this this uh, position. So, uh, from my point of view, I think all of us who were involved. Uh, came away um, uh, with a very high degree of conviction that this was a wonderful, well-timed, and very uh, positive uh, move for our organization. Thank you, Colin. Um, anybody else from the committee want to say a few words? Hi, this is Dawn. Um, I'm uh, extremely excited um, that Remy is going to be taking on this position. I feel like she is a thousand percent ready for it and is the perfect person um, to partner with Yasmin. Um, I'm excited to um, uh, just about the new heights that we're going to reach um, with these two at the helm. Um, I have zero reservations about um, uh, if Remy can do the job and actually elevate um, uh, the position as well. And so um, I hope that we uh, can all agree that that's the direction that we should go. Um, everyone that interviewed felt the same way. Um, it is uh, the right time for the position and the right person um, to, to take it on. Great. Any other summary comments? Lael or Michael? Richard, I think Lael had to hop off a few minutes early, right when we went back into open session. Okay. Again, uh, Having participated with the rest of the group, including Colin, Don, Lael, and, and Michael, I think we all appreciated, uh, among others, Remy's background in uh, prior to getting to Uplift, and then in addition, uh, what she's accomplished at Uplift, in particular in her, in her last role uh, leading a team, and uh, has demonstrated through our, our COVID challenges to exert herself in a leadership role which really welcomed the opportunity to, to, to provide this promotion as a way to, to, to really help set the, 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 the stage for kind of our next level of uh, organization. And so, um, again, it, it, was, it was a privilege to be a part of it. She was very well prepared and very, had, 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 uh, was ready for all the questions we were asking. And we felt very comfortable with uh, what we were being presented. 
Um, if there's no other comments, um, I'll, I'll see if there's a motion to approve this, the, this uh, Yasmin's, the CEO's recommendation for Dr. Remy Washington to serve as president and thereby an officer of Uplift Education. So moved. I would be honored to second that motion. Thank you, Don. Thank you, uh, Colm. Are there any votes against the motion? Hearing none, I ask Alex to note all members of the executive committee present voted in favor of the motion and the motion passes. Thank you and congratulations to Remy. If I had a glass of champagne, I would hold it up. Congratulations. Congratulations, Remy. Uh, can I say something, as well? uh, Richard, can I say something? Okay. Yes. Yes. Hey, president, you don't have to ask my permission to say something. I just want to say one, just thank you, Colum, Don, and Richard for your kind words, and the committee who spent time with me. Um, I don't even remember how long ago it's been, but a couple weeks ago. Um, I just want to say it is just a, such an amazing opportunity and privilege. And like, honestly, I'm just really overwhelmed with just your confidence you have in me um, to take on the role. But I've just had such an awesome, almost eight years here at Uplift um, to really work alongside our leaders and teachers and just super excited to continue to work with my e-team colleagues, obviously alongside Yasmin and work more closely with the board um, to continue to do the work that, you know, we know we really need to do on the behalf of our students. So just super, super excited. Um, and just want to say thank you guys for just having the opportunity to lead in this new capacity. Right. And again, thank you. It, you again, you were well prepared and we appreciated your thoughts. You, we could tell it was from the heart. Um, Alex, do we, uh, do we have any community members signed up to speak during the community forum session? We do not, Richard. Thank you. If there's no other further business before the board, this meeting is hereby adjourned. The time is now 527 p.m. And thank you very much.